please don't forget uh, to support this broadcast. We have some of the very best uh, deals uh, out there uh, for folks uh, who would like to filter their water and not drink what the globalists are putting in there. We have the ProPure water filtration system uh, with 10% off with promo code WATER uh, available at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, we have the new uh, July issue of the magazine that has 10 uh, high-quality InfoWars.com bumper stickers uh, inside of it and things like uh, listen to the Alex Jones Show at InfoWars.com. Um, that is available. You can buy these at cost in bulk of magazines of 10 up to uh, 100. And so um, 100 magazines uh, would be a 1,000 uh, bumper stickers to put up in legal lawful areas and it covers the fact that you are the target of the NSA spying right way to wake up friends and family you can also give a 12-month gift subscription uh, to InfoWars magazine uh, as well ladies and gentlemen for the rest of the hour we are joined by two gentlemen that are here in town working with us uh, on several uh, films and of course getting ready for the promotion of state of mind the psychology of control a great new documentary they've made we have the uh, historian and researcher uh, Richard Grove here with us. And then, of course, we also have James Lane of freemindfilms.com. And uh, they're also going to be taping with us tonight for intros and outros and a breakdown of State of Mind uh, that is going to be premiering July 17th uh, next month on InfoWars Nightly News for all PrisonPlanet.tv viewers uh, and subscribers. They also made the film A Noble Lie. And we're almost sold out uh, of the good deal I got uh, on the animated documentary about the history of the private Federal Reserve being far and owned. Riveting film. We'll still carry it, but I'm not going to be able to get as good a deal as I got on it where I can give it away free. So uh, we'll still be selling it, but uh, we won't be able to offer it free uh, very, very soon, probably today or tomorrow, because we're selling out of the free DVD American Dream when you get on Blu-ray uh, or on DVD, State of Mind, at InfoWarsStore.com. We are the exclusive distributor for the next three months uh, of the film. But I didn't mean to start this hour with a plug. The point is, that's why they're here. But we were talking during the break, guys, and I had you on in overdrive yesterday. And, and, and again, I've done a lot of deep research in the New World Order, writing, uh, reading their own writings. And so I know what their real game plan is, which you can learn, too, if you just do the research. Uh, but talking to Mr. Grove and Mr. Lane, who I've known off and on over the years, they really have done their research and have a fix on what's happening. So I asked them during the break, I said, what do you think is at the underlying push for saying two men together or two women together is marriage? Uh, what is behind the sexualization of children? What is behind showing men as fathers as being dumb idiots in every show? What is behind it? Well, the U.N., uh, actually, and I covered this last hour, officially says they produce dramas uh, and soap operas to break up the family worldwide. And they say to reduce the family. The state is in competition with it, but uh, you guys had some of the deeper uh, reasons for it. And again, Huxley, in Brave New World, written in 1932, published in 33, he said that would all be done, the end of the family, the end of the institution. This is part of the dehumanization and so they try to make it like a civil right and like, oh, you hate these groups of people. It has nothing to do with what you individually, what your identity is, what you stand for. They're trying to program a false identity into what you would have been naturally, ladies and gentlemen, cold-bloodedly to, to then create artificial groups that want to operate as families, but then are going to use the state to come and harvest biological family's children to create this new structure where the mom is a cop and her 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 wife is a woman she's the man uh, on these shows uh, that are out there uh, that I was just talking about in the last hour uh, just absolutely incredible and I've kind of gone off on a ranting jag about this the show is called the Fosters and I saw the promo last night uh, before a movie and at the end, they go, the biological parents know they're here. And, and the uh, man of the house, the, the female cop, she gets her gun and goes and takes them down. Well, in the real world, the, uh, they are attacking heterosexuals. And again, I'm not saying the entire group of you know, people that have different sexual uh, persuasions are doing that. The, the government is advertising, hey, we want to put you in as the cult commanders. We want you to be... 
uh, the new synthetic family. We're going to provide you the kids. We're going to harvest from the heterosexuals. And the shows now are going from men are bad to saying mother or father is hateful. France has banned it. The federal government's banning it. The EEOC is telling federal employees who are a kept group of slaves more than others. You know, they're deeper down the rat hole that you will not say at a company party, my husband or wife, that is hate speech. Now, that came out two weeks ago. Uh, Gigi uh, Arnett here in our office did a report on that from their own Justice Department website. So you guys have studied this in depth. You get into the mass mind control that's going on. Richard Grove, uh, James Lane, uh, break down your take on this on this huge issue. I mean, it's genius to to frame sexualizing children and teaching them about heterosexual or homosexual sex at age five as civil rights training. Uh, so so why didn't Jimmy Savelle of the BBC caught with all these kids? He should have said he was teaching them a civil right. Well, actually, that's what NAMBLA says. And the UN supports NAMBLA. So, so again, if you don't turn your kids over, folks, you are a bigot. Go ahead. Well, and this is what, you know, when you bring up, uh, you know, Aldous Huxley in the Brave New World, I mean, he called this out how long ago? I mean, it's, it's following this. this 32. Agenda. Right. Now, his brother, Julian Huxley, was head of UNESCO. You talk about the UN pushing this. Well, here, here his brother was part of the education. His brother program. started it. Yeah. So, I mean, we see, we see how, how this was all called out so many years ago, and we're seeing it come to fruition now. The hypersexualization of the children, the breakdown of the family, uh, you know, like you're saying, we're, you can't even say the word mother and father. I mean, it's, it's right out of the book. See, first they say don't say the N-word. We agree that, you know, that's, that's really mean, but people have the right to say it. Now they're arresting you if you do. Next, it's, I mean, I heard a guy say, hey, let's go get Chinese food. It's two Hispanics and a white guy, and they go, don't say Chinese. Like, like uh, pretty soon, you know, up and down is racist. No, and now that's Orwellian. It's reducing the language down to, to where we can't communicate properly. You know, it, it, words are bad, you know. Anyways, I'm ranting. Go over that. Well, I think what you guys are observing is that there's an agenda. There's an agenda to dissolve the family. Uh, Brave New World is more like a business plan. It was written as fiction, but that's how they get the plan out there. And so he said, again, in 62, as you know, in Brave New World Revisited, he said this is a real plan. And in The Ultimate Revolution, he's talking about how to control human resources. So you have a eugenics agenda that starts with T.H. Huxley, who was Darwin's bulldog. So this all ties back up to eugenics. He was in a secret breeding program. And he was also in the X Club. So there's also secret societies and intellectual intelligentsia that are making their, their, their momentum known through culture. And these are guys with 180 IQs. They are polymaths, and they have a lot of office supplies, as I like to say. So they're well-staffed, they're organized, and we need to catch up to them in, in, in every way, doing our, our research and history. To break them down. Well, Brave New World is trying to make the world asexual, where you have adults that no longer are bred with parents. That's how the book starts out. Uh, you're walking through this room of test tube babies, and the government, the state, is their parent. And so how do they get from where we were in America to, you know, Brave New World? That's the process we're going through right now. You get it where the state supplies children to the gay and lesbian couples that want kids. Right. And you abort most of the kids so that there's a shortage. And they have actuaries all on that. It's all planned out is what's incredible. Well, when your listeners go to InfoWarsTore and get the state of mind, the psychology of control, we have a, a, a long clip in there where uh, uh, Ald Aldous Huxley is actually going through and describing the world we're living in today. It was a Mike Wallace interview in 1953 and describes it perfectly, even the pharmacological control of the anti-authoritarian personality, which is so prominent now within uh, psychology in, in this country. Well, they incredible. Create, they create cognitive dissonance, and then they pathologize our descent to the contradictions that we see, and that's what. Say, explain that in layman's terms. Um, they present us with contradictory information. So, if you watch cartel media, you're going to see a bunch of opposing stories that don't make sense. That creates cognitive dissonance. The uh, attempting of two facts to reconcile as one makes you shut down. Right, and so people sometimes get upset about that, and so that dissent is then pathologized by our education system, and they say, "Give that kid some SSRIs so that he." You know, they admit, and then the SSRIs cause more mental illness, so then now the answer is more drugs. Then it causes more mass shootings. The answer is more drugs. Well, I can't help but notice that a lot of the pharmaceutical interests who funded MK Ultra and you know, uh, all these uh, pharmaceuticals today, the SSRIs, are very close to an LSD derivative. So it's, uh, it's very much like LSD without the, the trippiness. Well, they're actually listed as in the hallucinogen class. Right, exactly. Well, and then you use the tax-free foundations to uh, fund, okay, we'll give you your hospital, you know, millions of dollars, but you need to push all of these drugs, you know, and this is how they're operating. 
Well, and that's another credible thing that I found out. Like after leaving the corporate world, you see all this information on the internet and it says the Rockefellers are bad, but there's not really a lot of credible information. But when you get into the primary sources, there's a book called Rockefeller Medicine Men. And, and basically what it shows is along with the education system and along with the foundations, they were also in the medical establishments. They were funding eugenics and they're funding Cold Spring Harbor. They're funding the Nazis. I mean, there's definitely a lot of credible history that is not very much talked about. They took I over the entire private uh, charity hospital program. Exactly. And so that's another problem. Posing as charity, posing as philanthropy, going around asking for people for money and people think these are great, you know, great activities. But as Norman Dodd showed in the Reese Committee, the, the Ford, Rockefeller and Carnegie Foundations were bent on dissolving America's boundaries, denationalizing it. They're internationalists, they're globalists, they're collectivists. Their ideas of how philosophy work in the world are antithetical to American philosophy of reality that we own ourselves we have a right to our own private property and we will not be collectivized and again once they have standardized and patented all the genes they're saying they'll have to pre-certify they're already saying this embryos to decide if you can have that child because under collectivist health care while we're all not going to pay for your bad genes never telling you it's the chemicals in the environment and things they've added that are triggering the genes. And this goes back to the early parts of eugenics where you were going to have to go in and get a license to have a child. You know, and if you had, uh, you know, bad genes in your family, you'd be denied. You know, uh, there was outrage after, you know, the National Socialist Experiment, but uh, we've come full circle here, here. Here we're coming back at it again. You guys, I'm sure, have seen our videos and Mark Dice's videos where we go out and 90 plus percent of people say, arrest everyone that wants freedom, confiscate all the guns. Uh, put conservatives in FEMA camps. Now, we go to trendy areas, but these so-called liberals are not liberals at all. They're like empty buckets that have had propaganda poured in. Stimulus reaction. What you're noticing is you're encountering human beings who, when you ask them a question or make some assertions, say, you know, I've seen all of Dice's videos and they're hysterical because and at the same time, they're sad that our culture... He always says, for Obama. Right. So they support it because well, he, he means he's good. Mm -hmm. He's liberal. So we're going to put everybody in a death camp for Obama. Oh, well, certainly. Let me. We're going to kill them. Get death camp. Oh, yes, man. Oh. And conditioned in school to accept authority unquestionably. And it does help. He's like six foot four. No, I mean, they tell you in sales, if a guy's tall, he will just do whatever they say. Of course, not me. I must have a Napoleon complex because I'll beat their ass. Excuse me. I apologize for talking like that. <laughs> not Marx. You know what I mean? Some big guy gets in my face. <laughs> The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because Today, we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter, and in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. Richard Grove, who is a forensic historian, and James Lane, both filmmakers, are in studio, and they know their stuff. This is a short segment, long segment coming up. We'll go to some calls, play some clips premiered here on the air of the film that's released July 17th on InfoWars Nightly News. Uh, but gentlemen, uh, in essence, what is the New World Order? What is their master goal? And how are things going for them? I would give an example of uh, a book called The Molecular Vision of Life by Lily Kay, who is an MIT professor. And it's about Rockefeller Caltech and the rebranding of eugenics as molecular biology to take control of human resources. And they had to rebrand it because they were involved with the Nazis and because of the Nazi regime, eugenics got such a... And we have that book. Right, yeah. right, exactly. And so in the InfoWars store, you can find this book, you can get into it and you can start to read through and get this real history because it's, A, I had a hard time finding the book when I first found out about it. So it's a resource that you're gonna have to, and you can read and reread because 
it's so much more credible than uh, a, th a tertiary source. This is an MIT professor that you know it has accolades on the back from some you know some very famous scientists in our history. And so the fact that people like that support her, you don't get in the club, right? Again, my dad was top of his class in Texas. They brought him in as a high schooler and told him all this. And of course, he didn't go along with it. Right. Uh, I mean, it was, go ahead. Well, the idea is that they're rebranding our culture. So they're taking us away from being self-reliant individuals, and they're trying to collectivize us as at the same time. So that's a, that's a mind game. At the same time, they have eugenics going on, which is a physical reality game that they're playing with us. That, you know, it's, it's a, what they want to paint with the world is very much the brave new world vision of no parents in the future, depopulation, everything's aut automated. And the people who don't choose the automation, they live in the, the woods like animals, and they're not even treated as people. So they, there's really an ego complex at, at, the, at the heart of this. I think the people that do this lack love and, and satisfaction. And They're happiness. creating an artificial habitat construct in their own words, so it's impossible for us to survive without them, the final revolution. It's a physical and a mental terrarium that they create that we have to learn how to escape. And you're a slave until you find out that that exists. And what's incredible is they've written hundreds of books admitting it, and they're doing it, right. and, and they're total criminals. I mean, it's not debatable. It's and not. it's actually trying to get people down to the level to where uh, dissent is is completely uh, removed from the equation. Now, the, like you said, there's no mulligans, there's no do-overs on this. This is why it's so important to get involved and, and, and get this information out. Well, and like the guy writing on chalk, writing with chalk in front of the bank, and it's going to be 10 years of the kid wearing the T-shirt, and you know, 13 years in prison. Right. So this is ludicrous. People should recognize that the people. This is hardcore authoritarianism. Uh, Stalin would send you away for 10 years for 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 worse, you know, worse free speech stuff. I mean, this is Stalin. I once did an episode on the Gulag Archipelago, and I, I was going through Solzhenitsyn's work, and I really just, I was horrified by the parallels that I was noticing. And it's like, if only people had read this book, maybe America wouldn't even be where they are right now. I read his book 20 years ago, and I reread it about three years ago. I'm going to be honest with you. I cried on my back porch because we'd already gotten like 80% there. But we're not all the way there, and that's the hope. Well, it's different. It's Russia never had a free press. So there's like these vestigial islands of liberty left in the sea of tyranny. So it, it, it's like a parallel. There's like both worlds together now. And they're trying to dissolve the old let us out. Yeah. Well, and all this, I think, compounds onto what uh, Bruce Levine talks about in the movie, Learned Helplessness. You know, everywhere somebody turns, they, they, it seems like they, they're powerless, they can't do anything, and eventually they give up. There was experiments with dogs where, you know, they kept getting a shock and no matter what they did. And eventually, you know, they would open the, the, the cage or whatever. Just and they, gave up. And they just they, they surrendered. And this is, I think, one of the major elements of, that we as a, you know, a, a free society have to overcome is this learned helplessness. I think that's the major tool that they use through a dynamic means of methods. We just have to realize we're not dogs. That if we can realize that situation, we can choose to outgrow that status quo. That That's why they're always telling us we don't have free will. Uh, but even top you know, physicists have gone out uh, and done the research and found, no, there really is free will. That's what makes us human is controlling our environment and realizing that we can make choices about what we want to be. They know that. They're trying to build an artificial construct to remove those choices. They do know that. That is the modus operandi of all their operations. And Hegel said that the, the true nature of an individual is to be free. And as soon as they discovered that, they're like, wow, government's going to be obsolete if everyone figures that out. We better try to put the, the lid on the jar here and keep all these fleas in and train them and break And the then they pose as if they're the humanitarians. They're the opposite. And you talk about the Galen dialectic, the problem, reaction, solution, you know, and, and I know your listeners are familiar with that. We actually interview Kurt Haskell in the film as a real world example of, of the Hegelian dialectic at play. You know, he was a witness there of the underwear bomber. You know, you know the story. Uh, Government and, run. Yeah. yeah. And then here comes Chertoff, who actually has financial interest in the naked body scanners, you know, pushing that. You know, uh, after the after the fact, they'd already been they built. They were being delivered the next week. Yep. It was all segued as perfect PR. Yep. Well, and that's another thing I learned after I left the corporate world that shocked me, and it's illustrated in a book like uh, Trevor Harrison's uh, Terror Factory, where FBI makes these terror. You know, 14 out of 22 in past 9/11 have been made by the FBI, according to the New York Times. And look at Ahmad Salam. You know, I mean, he just uh, it said they're, they're giving me explosives to give these guys, and he goes into witness relocation, and we never heard from him again. CBS actually ran the tapes where the FBI handler saying yes. Well. Well, he said, he, they told him, give him real explosives. He said, no, I'm not. And they go, yes, you are, and detonators, and then stood down and let them bomb the building. We'll be right back, gentlemen. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. 
My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now, that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. All right, I know we got callers across the board holding. I'm going to get to you with our guest. But these filmmakers have done their research. They really know deeply what they're talking about. And within this knowledge is the future. We cannot just turn the world over to globalists that are busily dumbing everybody down so they can take over the planet. Because from my research, once they have full control, they're going to reduce the population in their own words between 80 and 90 plus percent. And some of their documents show even more, but they don't tell their own minions that. You know, they give them numbers where they think uh, that it's going to be, you know, only 80% or so. And the people that are part of this really get on power trips that they've been let in on this. I mean, if you talk to any biology department head at a major university, if you talk to any uh, head of computer science or nanotech, if you talk to any uh, anybody at any major university, I mean, I had that big professor on yesterday, the head of their computer science research nanotech cybernetics department. And he said, yes, I work with Ray Kurzweil. Yes, I work with all these people. And I looked it up. He's on record working with them all. And he goes, yes, it is true that you know, most of the establishment is just planning to get rid of everybody. So I'm, I think we should have a debate about this. I mean, that's the thing, folks. <laughs> this is the, what you're hearing here for the PhDs and people that work in academia. They'll sit there and go, well, there are too many people, aren't there? here in, in Austin, Texas, has the uh, Austin uh, head of Agenda 21 here admitting that depopulation is, is part of their agenda. Uh, actually, uh, was one of our reporters uh, went out. Was it John Bowne or Melissa Melton? I mean, we've got that bombshell interview where oh, there's two of them. And you go talk to the professor, the head of the, of the UT uh, Agenda 21 program. Was that you? Oh, it was you and Melissa. That's why I was confused who it was. Uh, and he just goes, yeah, that is part of the plan. Is openly and then he starts going, look at my plaque from the CIA, huh? Huh? I'm a, right. ma I'm a made man, baby. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're joking with themselves, and I don't think we should believe their jokes anymore. And people take it seriously that overpopulation is a real fact. But if you study the numbers, uh, Western countries aren't aren't uh, keeping up with the, with the death rate, and so we're underpopulating. We ourselves. have 1.3 children. And you need two people to replace two people. So that's the problem. That's and that's why, and we've already been replaced by predominantly Latin America, which is fine with me as long as we get them to be free minds and not programmed by the globalists. So I tell the Latin Americans, what do you mean open up the border more so you win in a La Raza, La Reconquista? See, the, the globalists sell a racial-based deal, but only... Only when it's being used to destroy a nation state. It's not even really a racial based deal. More divide and conquer. Well, More divide and conquer. And the other idea is that what you have today is uh, the technotronic era, the post industrial world. We cre they, they created the bubble when they created the industrialized world. They, they, they needed overpopulation to an extent to create all this technology so that they could harness humans, build robots, and get rid of the rest of us because that's part of their bigger. Agenda. They call this the technotronic uh, bloom, and you're talking about Brzezinski's book. Right. And so I got into Brzezinski not because of his political ideas, but because of his work on cybernetics. And if you look at any of his books and you go to the index and look up the word cybernetics, he's going to tell you how the collection of information is being used to collectivize individuals and control people socially. And it's a form of cybernetics, which comes from a Greek word, kybernetes, which means governor or helmsman. Or, you know, it's about the art of ruling nations, the art of ruling many individuals to de-individualize them and collectivize them, collect their information, predict their behavior and control and monopolize the markets. But this is a cybernetic towards our end, not towards our empowerment. Can you imagine if we had altruists and people that really wanted to go to the stars? We'd already be there. Mm -hmm. I mean, these people, but they want to go back to feudalism. 
Well, I think the, also the priorities are messed up. Why are we going to other planets if we can't figure out how to like uh, work out problems without using violence on this planet? If we're, if we're, you know, if our governments and the way the world is being run is through force, fraud, coercion, and aggression, why do we want to spread that to other planets? Shouldn't we just figure some stuff out here? And shouldn't we maybe allocate some of the resources that we're using for our insecurity as our, uh, you know, uh, a defense budget? You know, it's our insecurity budget. Like, shouldn't we take some of that funding and maybe do some stuff for, you know, people in this country who whose families worked hard and paid into those funds instead of... But if you empower people, you've got to compete with them. That's a, that's a problem for people who are lazy, people who have been born into some sort of trust fund world where they didn't have to work for their money. There's a lot of other honest, hardworking people out in the world who are getting screwed uh, because they do not know that there are predators, there are sharks out there, there are dishonest people, there are con men, and you have to be able to f uh, discern fact from fiction. And people lie using words. So you have to parse the words that individuals use. Sure. How, to sentences. how do you think it's going, Richard Grove and James Lane, for them right now? I think they're on the fence and they really don't even know it because so many people are waking up that, that we didn't even intend to wake up because of what's going on. There's just an accumulation, a momentum, uh, the gravamen of what's going on as far as getting on people's radar to say, wait, that's that's idiocracy. Like that's that's supposed to be a fictional movie. It's going on in our reality. Like things are getting just a little too crazy. It's getting just a little bit too close to a dystopian. Isn't it the movie. human survival instinct is overriding? Even globalist programming. Right. Well, and so much information is coming out now. I mean, you look at the NSA deal. You know, we were talking about this before. Where uh, you know, '96, we're talking about Carnivore Echelon. You know, 2006, uh, Mark Klein broke the the deal about the NARA systems at the AT&T communication hubs. We're pulling off petabytes of data a month just in one regional hub. You know, and and you try to talk to people about that, and they're like, oh, you know, again, conspiracy theorists. But now it's out in the mainstream news that, yes, the NSA is monitoring all of your emails, your phone calls. And, and now they're starting to recognize that. I think that in combination with, uh, you know, as this information, this worldview, the true view of, you know, world history is starting to become more prominent. Uh, we're, we're approaching critical mass. And I think they're scrambling. They're, they're reverting to a more overt physical level of control now because they, I think they're, I think they're afraid. Well, you know, George Arwell and uh, Huxley, as you know, had, had a debate in letters before he died in forty nine about whose book would be more accurate. Would it be a 1984 dominant system or would it be a, a, a Brave New World Huxley system? And Huxley, as you know, bragged, well, I, I, it's my system of pharmacia and dehumanization to where they don't even know they're slaves that will win. Uh, and he, he somewhat convinced uh, 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 Orwell, but maybe Orwell was right. Well, I think we were actually living, currently living in an amalgam of the two. Yeah. Orwell was a student of Huxley. And Huxley's grandfather taught H.G. Wells. So you see an ominous continuity of Fabian socialism, of the use of science fiction to create these agendas. That no, it was a five-family interbreeding program Wedgwood, on record. Right, with the Wedgwoods and so the, the people, Galtons. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they've been studying us for a long time. They've been studying the, the animal world as well to try to figure out, to crack the, you know, the, the nut of the human spirit, to, to crush our spirit, to make mm -hmm. us submit. That's the game on the planet thus far, is there are people in control who use force, fraud, and coercion, and they try to make us submit. These and are I, the most uncool people. And I say don't give them the satisfaction. Why do they deserve our submission? Why? What have they done to earn it? And they said we would love our servitude. Well, they said that, but I don't know if they can do that if we're still using reason and... and but if they say we're going to teach your five-year-old how to have uh, brutal sex acts, uh, if we tell them it's civil rights, it's okay. Jocelyn Elders. I mean, you know, these types of things. What Iserby brings up in the... Delivery. A creepy old woman talking about helping five-year-olds masturbate. And the reason I bring that up is these are crazy people. Well, I mean, you're not supposed to be thinking about stuff like that. Well, another thing that we, we bring up in uh, State of Mind is, you know, propaganda and uh, how uh, Bernays, uh, you, you know, actually changed the language. You know, it's not the Department of War, it's the Department of Defense, as you brought up in the film. You know, uh, it's changing the words, changing the language. And every time that, that we actually cut them off, they step back and repackage it and come at us again, you know, with it. Oh, it's no it's no longer a real idea. It's the, uh, you know, uh, it's no longer a war. It's a kinetic action. Yeah. And now he came out. Uh, the fiction writer, who's what, 30 years old, they've hired at the Pentagon to do all this writing. Uh, he came out and said, this is a violent, nonviolent uh, aid we're giving the Syrian rebels. His brother's the president of the CBS, right? I mean, yeah. We're talking about Rhodes. So here's a, here's a guy who I was like, how does this guy have qualifications to be a deputy national security advisor? I think that was his official title. Yeah, 30 like, years old fiction writer. Yeah, that's, that's where we're at in America right now. And I think we need to wake up from that American dream. Well, I mean, they literally write fiction 
and people believe it. So fiction is made out of declarative sentences. We have to question that. Is that really real? Is there a basis in reality? Are they talking about things that exist? Are they talking about some nebulous, ambiguous, particular uh, that's not defined? And so it's by observing, identifying, defining our terms, removing contradictions, and communicating that we get back to reality and can express knowledge and wisdom to each other instead of having divide and conquer. And, and circumventing the media where they're, you know, they're getting this fiction just handed to them and, and talking like it's, this is reality and giving that as news, you know, getting that straight from the government uh, or, or corporations, uh, we're becoming the media. You know? Rachel Maddow, Rhodes Scholar, mm -hmm. says with a straight face, Alex Jones says there's giant wasp under the UN building. He actually says that. He's crazy. It's time to not listen to him. That is, I never talked about giant wasp. That is a 100% lie. And then she told like five other lies, literally preying on her audience. Folks, Rhodes Scholars are dedicated to worldwide eugenics, worldwide evil, and the end of the family. And tell, tell them what Rhodes Scholars are. Okay, so uh, in the... Bill Clinton, story, Hillary Clinton. Yeah, there's a Tragedy and Hope by Carol Quigley, a 1966 textbook that had its plates destroyed and they reprinted only the second half of the book as a history, uh, the, the history of the world since 1939. And so what Quigley does in this book, when you get the whole uncensored copy, which this is an uncensored copy that includes all the pages that were censored out of the other versions, there is an agenda, there is a plan, names are named. Uh, Quigley had access to the official CFR, Pilgrim Society, all these different Anglo-American establishment resources and archives. And he was able to map out the Rothschild family, the CFR, all these different working groups and what their agenda is, tracing it back to the last will and testament of Cecil John Rhodes, who founded De Beers, uh, diamonds and, and, and gold. And he said, I'm going to set up a British covert worldwide empire. And he was funded directly by Lord Rothschild and his will and, and the Rhodes Scholar Trust. Uh, in the uh, Sir Anthony Kenny book, talking about the history of the Rhodes Trust, it says it goes back to the Rothschilds. And who runs all the major congressional publications? Uh, the Rothschild Banking Empire, Roll Call, Congressional Quarterly, uh, I believe The Economist, and they also helped to found the London School of Economics, a Fabian socialist institution. So really. Whose symbol is a wolf, wolf in sheep's, sheep's clothing. clothing. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So these people, if you just look at their symbols, you can tell what they're up to. But they expect that people won't read, that people won't look at these things, that people just will not use their five senses and their observation skills and their God-given uh, creativity and their inspiration and their imagination to figure out, like, there's a bunch of odd, confusing pieces that we're presented with every day. How do these things fit together? And which of these things are lies to deceive us? And where's the truth that I need to focus on to survive? Well, one thing that we did uh, when, when we went to CPAC, uh, it, Ron Paul won the straw poll the second time, and everybody was very intent on being there and actually cheer for him. They, they had the year, uh, the time before, they had all left, and so the, a lot of the uh, more establishment Republicans said we're booing. And so we go there, and I, I recorded it. And uh, when I watched the Fox News clip, it shows the booing. And the guy had on a different shirt and a lanyard from the year before. Now, how in the world does that actually get put in from last year's archive, get put in the, that? Uh, on purpose. Right. Psychological and warfare. so we put that, yeah, it is, a psyop. And so we actually put together the videos side by side and showed everybody cheering. It was overwhelming applause and cheers. You know, and they're asking Ron Paul, he's like, well, how did you feel when you got booed, you know, a second time, basically? And Fox News actually had to issue a retraction because, you know, I think there was three different videos out there that actually got the information out. And it was, you know, it embarrassed. Them. And that's what we have to do. We oh, have to listen, do I've had people go, my gosh, I Bloomberg called me and asked questions and they actually misquoted me on purpose. They lied to me and said it wasn't a hit piece. And I said, of course they did. It was uh, such a hit piece. I mean, that that disturbed me when I read that because they said Alex Jones is going to blow everything up. Yeah. It says that you make bombers. And the tweet that I put out is no, the FBI, according to the New York Times, the FBI makes bombers. That's on record. There's no there's nothing on record that you've ever made a bomber that you've ever influenced anyone to take violence. Well, listen, I'm trying to stop violence. And everybody knows that. Right. Oh, and people are asking me because, you know, I live in Oklahoma, you know, with the tornadoes and everything. They're like, did Alex say that, you know, Obama used uh, weather weapons to, to create the tornadoes? No, you just brought up the point that there was uh, 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 patents on technology on, exists yeah, the technology from our tax exists, dollars, you know, and so then they take everything you say out of context. Again, this is a oh, well, I got called by Esquire because they got a big cover story coming out on me. And the guy said, did you really say that? And I said, you know what? I'm not even going to defend it. I said, OK, I'll, I'll look up the YouTube where I said it. You know what? And I said, you know what? I'm not even going to look up what I said. Write whatever you want. Y you know what? Go ahead and say I did that because I don't care. I didn't say that. A lady called up and said. I think that they made this tornado do this. And I said, no, it's mainly big hurricanes and weather systems. This is all patented, so I can't say they did it. But it's on record that this weather warfare stuff exists. Mm -hmm. 
and Maddow, in between saying, I believe giant wasp live in places, went with that and so did a bunch of other national TV. That's what they've got to do, folks, is lie to you. And I think it's a sign of weakness because the reason that Maddow has to do that and never address your points is because she treats her audience like they're a bunch of idiots and she, her arguments are intellectually bankrupt. She never addresses any of the facts. She, att she attacks you as a messenger, which is a fallacy. And you must be effective or they wouldn't be doing this. Right. Well, sure, but I mean, my point is saying I don't build bombers, I build bomb. I mean, I don't build bombs, I build bombers, saying that I believe giant wasps live under the... You know, the UN building, I mean, they're really lying about me all over the place. What do you think that signifies? Weakness, like desperation, unprepared for these types of things coming onto their radar. Because when the Rhodes Scholars were founded, there was no social media or internet or anything. So their, their agenda has stayed the same through, and they're trying to adapt and evolve. And it shows, again, that they're intellectually bankrupt, that they, they have no reason. They're acting irrational, and I think we should just call them out on that. Yeah, and, and free humanity is adaptable, and we're taking the tools that were meant to enslave us and using it to fight them. You know, and that's what some of the most effective tools that we've got right now. I'm going to skip this network break because we're so far behind and I promise to go to some calls. But let's go to uh, this clip here, the elite versus individuals from the film available at InfoWarsStore.com. State of mind. Here it is. In an attempt to assist the state, a 14th century Italian named Niccolo Machiavelli crafted several books intended to help the ruling elite dominate their subjects with the most effective psychological warfare techniques available to the world at that time. And he was trying to convert the Medici family into hiring him to provide political advice. Conspiracy is the story of history. It's the story of plunderers taking care of people who produce. They claim to take care of them through government, which doesn't give you anything. It doesn't take away first. So it's not creating something out of nothing. It's very real what they're doing. They're taking your rights or taking some people's rights and adding more to someone else's rights. Concurrent to Machiavelli's efforts, the consequences of tyranny were sowing the seeds of liberty throughout Europe, with authors like Etienne de la Boetie of France leading individuals to consider their situations and discover effective means to achieving liberty for all. So this whole idea of Machiavelli telling the ruling elite how to do this in a more efficient and you know, uh, you know, effective manner without people directly knowing about it. But his mistake is that these books get out there and other people start to read these books because it's not just the ruling elite. Uh, this starts to have an influence in Europe. You've got a character named Etienne de la Boetie who writes a discourse on voluntary servitude. And basically what Della Boetti does is he shows you that everything that Machiavelli told the ruling elite about how to control you is undone when you understand it to the, you know, the, the nuts and bolts level where you can then withdraw your consent and that only then are you free. We control you. We control your mind. We make you believe you have no creative power. We make you forget you have imagination which is the core capability from which you can invent your own reality. That's right. Whatever humans envision, look at science fiction of 100 years ago, we can build. So they program us with predictive programming with a nightmare vision. So we accept that as our future instead of us just simply having imagination. And that just means looking deeper into what they're doing. And Machiavelli, just like the head of Georgetown Political Science, Bill Clinton's mentor, he wanted to write a weapons technology book on, on, on Psy War, Info War, and basically what Machiavelli did 500 years ago, Carol Quigley did in the 60s with Tragedy and Hope. Well, and it's not the only book that Quigley wrote. There's Anglo-American Establishment, Evolution of Civilizations, and there is one on political weapons and, and, and future technology. And so basically what you're seeing is he was taking in a macrocosm of how history has worked uh, and how these civilizations have, have risen and fallen. And then he's basically showing you, okay, now here's the 20th century. Here's the Anglo-American Establishment. Here's these people going off an agenda that's funded by the world's largest financiers. And they are moving ahead without much resistance through much of the 20th century. They're able to turn our education system into a system of schooling, not to make individuals who know how to learn anything for themselves, but to make obedient, servile workers uh, in, the, in the tradition of the Prussian education system. I talk to a lot of adults, and they, there is no one home. Right. They don't have any original thoughts. They just repeat, and there's no one there. They've ruined these people. But it doesn't end there. I mean, uh, they, they try to extinguish our creativity in the schooling system, but there's always a spark that can be reignited when people come into contact. I agree, but people love their ignorance. It's a shield for them. Well, it's become a trophy. It's become something that people are kind of proud of. So if they can know that there's Well, that's the new trendiness, that being lazy and not being informed is like a shield. 
Well, and, and as you brought up on your show many times about That's learned the, helplessness. The food. Just yeah, yeah, up. yeah, exactly. And uh, you talk about the food, right? Everybody is malnourished at this point. You know, the food is, is, is horrible. They're overworked. Uh, they're, they're, they're in debt. They're, you know, the, the, everything that they see, uh, you know, in media is, you know, the predictor programming is all dystopic, you know, I, and by the time they get home, they're exhausted. They don't, they don't do the research. You know, it's, it's a, it's a dynamic effect. That's just dragging their, their entire con. Yeah. Cause people don't say conspiracy theorists. Now they go, what am I going to do? Yeah, right. And what you're going to do is start living better. Start being happy. Start, go paint a painting, be nice to your family. But also speak out when you see kids buying gun that has aspartame, go, hey, you know that aspartame will brain damage you. Here's a card with some info on it. Yeah, that's all it takes. That act of fighting back, if we all do little stuff, it's game over, folks. If everybody gets this film and has a party and shows it to 10 friends, game over. Mm -hmm. if, if you get my magazine and get the 10 free bumper stickers that are in it, game over. It's all about resistance is victory. And I don't think it's ever going to be just uh, the dam breaks and it all just happens. I think it's going to be a slow drip, drip, drip of just getting everything out there. For you know, the I've talked to a lot of top Hollywood people. They say, look, most of us are awake to this. It's the old higher ups that want to keep us on the reservation. We don't like it. Even the rich and powerful realize they're slaves and don't want to be part of this. It is alluring to really be free. It is alluring to have the real fire of Prometheus, not the false fire of the Illuminati, where they claim they're illuminating you. They're not illuminating anything. You're not illuminated if you have knowledge and then try to keep others away from it. Right. So that's the whole idea. The The word education and the Johnson's Dictionary of 1828 said it's the unocculting, the unhiding of information. And very much what our education system focuses on today is selectively awesome. presenting yeah. you with declarative sentences, which is not a form of learning. And what you come out with thinking as knowledge is actually a... Our education system is occult. Right. And that doesn't mean witches around pots, folks. Occult means hidden. They are hiding the world from you. And that's the nature of power. That's the power gap information. I hate gap, the occult. The gap. They're all the same. Thing. I declare war on the occult. Well, and then we're educators and we're teachers then, right? Yeah, exactly. The thrill of empowering people is what it's all about. Not not the, again, they call it eugenics, but that's a cult. It's not getting rid of the, the dumb, building up the smart. It's targeting the smart. Again, the, the, the definition of eugenics is a cult because it's a lying definition. Well, it's a war on the weakest because they go after our children first. They, and the schooling system is definitely not there to educate children and make them autonomous individuals who can be self-responsible adults. Well, it's based on the Prussian system. Right, which mm -hmm. was used... It's General Zod. Have you seen Man of Steel? No, you know. I mean, it's a total anti-Illuminati, anti-eugenics film. Oh. And again, how could you get the guys that put out The Dark Knight? The last one I said, it's French Revolution. And then later I saw an interview after it came out, they go, oh, Bane's French Revolution. We spent a year designing his coat. I mean, I, I could see it and tell it was French Revolution, fake Illuminati Revolution. Well, then why would they put out Superman that's anti-eugenics? I think sometimes they just like to measure people's reactions to see how they respond to it. I, you know, some of the terrorist events that have happened in this history, I think, are just to measure how mm -hmm. the, what's the patriot response to this. Is anyone going to pick up on the contradiction in, in the evidence or is, it, or is no one home? Is no one reviewing the evidence? And so I think as they try to assert control more and more steadily and readily over humanity, uh, people react in different ways and they keep gauging it they're waiting oh, they want to see everyone wake up and that's their worst fear they keep thinking about it they keep talking about it and they know it's going to happen sooner or later that people are going to get it yeah, and that's what we we're talking about the analogy of trying to hold the, the ball underwater as, as we're inflating it they're having to hold harder and harder to keep it underwater its natural state is to, to be above water to be free you know and they have they're struggling now to keep it keep it under control and that unbelievable let's go to one more clip before we take a few calls here and i appreciate people holding this is on education from the film state of mind exclusively available uh at infowarsstore.com it's clip number five and then we'll play clip number seven after that so here's uh, clip number five and then we'll uh take some take some phone calls our children is, are going to get has nothing to do with education it is training uh, our children to be uh, resources, human resources, that's the way they refer to us, to spin off profits for the globalists. The greatest barrier to discovery is not ignorance. It's the illusion of knowledge. And that's what the 15,000 hours in compulsory schooling really entrains in, in and conditions into us, is that you've been told this story of the people in South America. And so you think you know about it. And it's not until later in life when you might come across more information about conquistadors and how Jesuits infiltrated all their religious systems and, and took all the riches out and basically harvested this whole area. And this is the example of plunder in South America that went on for hundreds of years. 
So until you have this other piece of information to bring this into focus, you think that what you were taught in public schooling during that 15,000 hours is really what's going on. And it's not until you bump up to, against reality, as George Orwell said, on a, usually on a battlefield, that you have to consider that which you were taught to believe versus the objective evidence that exists. John Taylor Gatto was an award-winning educator in New York who took kids that couldn't even read or write or headed for prison and made them top level students. And then he discovered that he was shut down by the big tax-free foundations so that he couldn't teach the children this information. And he discovered that it was by design that they were dumbing people down to make them subservient biological androids or replicants. That's what we're seen as. But now we're obsolete. We're to be phased out the new robotic systems, the drone aircraft, the drone submarines, the drone ships, the drone robots on the ground. We're all being conditioned, all being acclimated for this. State of mind, ladies and gentlemen, and, and there's a bunch of clips we haven't gotten to, and then there's so many people in this film, like Colonel Schaefer, G. Ever Griffin, you name it, InfoWarsStore.com. It's key information. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow uh, plum trees, grape trees. They will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices. We bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. 
The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit Lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> Brandon in California, thanks for holding. I appreciate you holding so long. You're on the air with our guest. Go ahead. Awesome. Good to meet you guys, finally. Um, first time caller, long time listener. Uh, Alex, I, I know sometimes when you um, have people thank you for the things that you do, you, you kind of react with, hey, don't thank me. But my theory with that is it's actually people's way of expressing that you're a hero to them. And they, they really just don't make that connection. You know, we, we look No, I get you. it. The solidarity. You guys are right. heroes to me sitting on hold while I perseverate. <laughs> and I, I love your vocabulary, too. Um, I'm actually uh, going to be a high school English teacher, and I'm going to make sure that the assignments the kids are given are um, designed to make them think. That's I'm one thing I found. This system is so centralized, you can basically do whatever you want, and, th and they'll never stop you. I just tell teachers, just, just sabotage the enemy. Explain to the kids about the New World Order. and just That's why they want to put cameras in there and robots in there. Go ahead, sir. Sorry. Y it's all right. You, you still got to be careful. But I also wanted to say um, I'm the creator of the largest private group on Planet Infowars. On, on Planet Infowars, I'm known as Freemind. I'm the creator of the Panopticon. Oh, good job. And, and some of the most wonderful information about the technocracy that's been created in our world is available in that group. And uh, we, we do accept anyone who comes in, but it is by request only. And um, also the creator of the uh, LDS, the Latter-day Saints for Freedom group on there as well. And there's a video that just recently got posted by one of our um, presidents, Ezra Taft Benson, who is a huge proponent of the Constitution and was warning about um, all of this stuff in the 50s, and he actually told the members of the LDS Church that they needed to read, none dare call it conspiracy, and consider it equal to Scripture. And when I heard that, my, my heart just went through the roof, because I'm like, dude, that's the book that woke Alex up. So um, basically just, I also wanted to tell you, Alex, that um, my wife and mother-in-law or do you just think you're the manliest man in the world? No, please, knock it off. No, God I'm bless you. <laughs> you're, you're a manly man. And oh, there's I'm a manly a man. <laughs> there's not a whole lot of them in the world, man. And and I, I think that's one of the reasons why people look up to you so much is because you're, you've got, uh, well, for lack of a better term, you've got a pair. And oh, you're okay. to, well, thank you, sir. I appreciate so. it. Here, here's what happens. I mean, if I, if I find a raccoon in my garage and I try to go over and kick it in the face, it's going to attack me. So I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's manly if I'm being attacked to stand up. It's natural to resist. It's unnatural to just let this all go, go on and, and not be outraged and, and focus your energy to do something positive. I have psychoanalyzed why I don't like being thanked. I don't feel like I do enough. And I almost feel guilty for the, for the little bit of notoriety I've gotten fighting this because that's not what I want. I want to end this. I mean, if we magically turned all this around, I'd be gone. Well, and you feel like that because there's always so much more to be done. No matter how much you get done in any given day, there's, it's still out there. Not enough people are aware. And back in the revolutionary times, only a very small part of the population was informed about what was going on enough to take action. And we don't need 100% of America to get what's going on. But if we had 10% that really understood what was going on... And didn't and comply. And, and did communicate to other, other percentages then we could do something successfully. Well, and, and the, uh, the caller says it works in education. See, State of Mind, I think, is a, a film that you could show to other educators and, and give them the, some of the origins of, of our current education system. Exactly. Reach out to leaders, pastors, uh, rabbis, imams, uh, business owners, teachers, doctors, police. That's what they're scared of. Gentlemen, you are uh, going to be interviewed for the Obama Deception too. Uh, so uh, you guys get some lunch. Then I want to do quick interviews for that. Then I want to do a tape uh, for the premiere of the film. And just really impressed. Always enjoy hearing you on your own radio shows. But I'm really impressed having you in studio with us. God bless you. Thank you. You're amazing. You're, God bless you. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free.
Check it out at infowars.com forward slash show.